Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, I know I was sharing something with you yesterday before I realized that we've shot, I mean, we've gone beyond our time. So we had to stop. I'm going to continue from there today. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise today. Because you are the great God and there is none like you. So we accept your word as truth into our hearts. Hallelujah. And we let it build our thoughts and form our new way of reasoning. That we will walk in your paths. And that you will cause the blessing to be seen in our lives. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare right now, burdens are being lifted and yokes are being destroyed. Whatever yoke that has been in your life, right now, be free from it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So I was sharing something with you yesterday. And I told you how, how the Lord taught me about offerings. Yes. And I was telling you yesterday that, yes, you may hear me say this now. I said, okay. I'll start practicing it. Lord, this is a seed to meet my needs for the week. Okay, fine. You are doing the right thing. But it doesn't mean you will see results immediately. You may, but it doesn't mean you will see consistent results immediately. Now, what's going to bring the consistent result? I'll tell you. The first thing you do is to take what I have just told you to him. It becomes your prayer point. So you introduce the Holy Spirit into what you have just heard. So you take it and say, Lord, wow, I just heard something from Pastor George now. I think I like it. How come you never told me anything about this? Now it's, it's a communication. What are you trying to do? You're trying to get him involved with your life where this is concerned. That's a smart thing to do. So, so Lord, wow. So it's possible for me to have invested a lot of money. Wow. Oh, talk to me about this. The moment you make a request to the Lord, he grants it. You may not hear him right away, but I'm telling you, he will surely speak to you. Because you didn't merely say it. You carried it in your heart. Wow. So that's why he told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate there in day and night. So now you're wondering, wow, I can actually, I, see, when I tell you from that moment, I stop being broke. I mean it. I mean it. Listen. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes I can share testimonies upon testimony and you will begin to wonder is this guy telling the truth at all but it's the truth it's our life we live it why the presence of god is involved that's what i'm trying to get you into get the holy spirit involved in everything you do so when you simply request lord talk to me about this offering matter and he will visit you he will, the moment he speaks to you. Now he's speaking already, see, because what, what I have just shared with you is a way, because I'm telling you, he shared it with me. <coughs> Excuse me. He shared it with me. Now he shared it with me, and I began to practice it, and I'm enjoying the result, meaning it is true. Now you practicing it, meaning you are practicing it, you're practicing the truth. But you see, to make that truth alive, to give it life, you must wait for his words to come on it. That's the secret. This is the secret. See, the act is not the secret. The spirit. Jesus said it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. Now, I've just told you something that came from the spirit. But the acting of it is in the flesh. 
So I give this offering, it's my seed to meet the need for this week. It's in the flesh. If you just do that, you are doing it in the flesh. It will profit nothing. But when you say, he said God told him. Okay, Holy Spirit, why haven't you told me? Can you talk to me about this? Then he speaks to you. The Spirit has given life to that thing you are doing in the flesh. Now, that is also how prophecies are fulfilled. Now, sometimes... We, we find people, they, they, they take prophecy, you know, you know something. I, I, I remember recently, I was meditating on some things the Lord had been sharing with me. And I told myself, I said, I don't think I want to teach on the book of Revelation again. I have done a series of teachings on, on, on the book of Revelation. One time we, we, we did a series on the whole book of Revelation. And I said, I don't think I want to um, teach on the book of Revelation. I mean, apart from picking things, you know. But when it comes to trying to tell the end, you know, trying to tell, explain the book as regards timing and series of events to the end. And, and, and I'll tell you the reason. We can never, no man can ever be accurate about the timings of these things. I said, really? Yeah. You see, let me explain to you, and I'm going to use the children of Israel as an example. And please follow me. God spoke to Abraham, and then he said, your children will be carried into a foreign land. And they are going to be slaves and they will be tormented 400 years. And God said, and then after 400 years, I will visit them and bring them out. And they will come out with great substance. And God said, I will bring them to this land and they will dwell here. Now, God had promised Abraham the land. Mind you, till Abraham died, he did not own an inch of the land that God promised him. All he had was the word of promise. That is what he transferred to Isaac, to Jacob. Praise God. So God spoke that word. And God never said, your children are going to sin. And when they sin against me, I will drive them away from this land into a foreign land. No, no, no. He just said. Actually, God told Abraham the reason. He said, because the iniquity of the Amorites who dwell in the land that I want to give you. Is not yet full. So, okay. Fine. <clears throat> you know the story. Abraham gave back to Isaac. Isaac gave back to Jacob. Jacob gave back to Joseph. Joseph was sold to Egypt. And then there was famine in the whole world. And then Jacob with his family moved over to Egypt. They were given a good place there to dwell. And then they were nourished and all that. And then the bondage started. Now, how did they go to Egypt? Were they following what God said? That Jacob remembered that God said this, that we will go to a foreign land. Okay, I think we have reached the time. Guys, let's move to a foreign land. No, time and chance was happening. They got into Egypt. All right. Now, the season of their deliverance came. No one was monitoring to say, I think we have reached 400 years old. It's time to move out. Oh yeah, let's start moving out. Who's going to lead the revolution? No. God by his own self, who spoke the word, began to work. Moses had already tried, you know, doing his own thing. And then, he, he, you know, some people say Moses knew the prophecy that it was time and he was the deliverer. So he wanted to do it according to the flesh. Now, that's not what the Bible said. See, now, Moses, but Moses actually tried, you know, to save a brother and then he slew an Egyptian and you know the story he ran away he, he got he was forgotten somewhere in Africa somewhere far away he was just forgotten there and then suddenly God shows up and says Moses I have heard the cry and, and God says and God remembered his word to Abraham and says Moses now get up 
you are going to Egypt and this is what you're going to tell Pharaoh. And Moses went to Egypt and God began to do all those miracles in the land of Egypt. He began to, you know, plague after plague, plague after plague. And, you know, sometimes we wonder why, why did God, how was God showing all that power in Egypt? Now, very powerful reason. You see, the children of Israel had been in Egypt for about 400 years. They have seen the power of Egypt. Now, when I mean power, the demonic powers that Egypt had exhibited over the years. They have seen the work of their magicians. They have heard stories. They have seen myths. You see? And you see, that's why sometimes you find Christians who get born again and they love God, but they get to a certain stage in their lives. They feel they want to accomplish something. I, I remember someone sharing with me one time about this, this man who, who wanted to join politics. Now, he, he was committed in his church. Real, real story now. He was committed in his church. And then now he, he, he felt, okay, I have money now. I want to join politics. And then he went somewhere and they, you know, like they say, they went to cook him up. And then his pastor heard about it and said, what's going on? And then he was bold enough to tell his pastor. He says, Pastor, sir, where I'm going to, I need it. <laughs> now, this is a committed brother in church telling his pastor that where I am going, you know, this journey in politics that I'm entering into, I need this thing. Not the power of God, but the power of some demons. And he, he was bold enough to tell his pastor, I need it. Now, when I heard that story, I said, it, it's just simple. He hasn't seen God do those things. See? And that's what happens to a lot of people. They love God. But they have seen, they have heard testimonies of people who did jazz. You know what I mean? And then they achieved what they achieved. And that's what happened. This is what happened to lots of God's children that get into politics. They are committed in church. They get into politics. And before you know what's happening, they have followed someone down to one place for them to do something to protect their life. Because now nah, everybody's your enemy. Everybody wants to kill you. Everybody wants your seat. And then you look at God. No, you see, we love God. We, you know, pastor, I will pay my tithes. I will, I will bring my offering. But you see this thing about protection. I need to, I need to jazz up. Why? Because they haven't seen the power of God. Now, that was what God was doing to them. To, no, you see, all those plagues was not just to punish the Egyptians. You need, you need to be clear on this. Those plagues were also to show his children. Now, these are people who haven't known anything about faith. These are people who just lived their life serving the Egyptians and they were in bondage to Egypt and they, they see how the Egyptians have controlled their lives. If, if, they want, if the Egyptians want rain to fall, they know what to do. <laughs> see, they, they, they want to take go and call down the rain and then they go and do their stuff they tell you tomorrow it's going to rain and rain falls tomorrow they, they've seen them go to war oh egypt is going to fight this nation ah you know what well how do we go about this war we know what to do we'll rain hailstones on on that nation and and we'll destroy them and then they'll do that Imagine growing up in that kind of environment and somebody brings a Bible to you and says, just believe in Jesus Christ. He will save you. You know, all these things is, is the power of darkness. So they don't have power. I don't believe in them. Oh. And yet they killed his brother. And then they say they are coming for him. You need to show him more than words. So when God was doing all those plagues, he was showing his children his mighty power. And you know the story. God would then turn water into, you know, Moses dropped his snake. Oh, say, yeah, we know this. Thing. They, they dropped down their snake. The, Moses' rod, the snake, swallowed up their own. And he picked it up. You mean God can do this also? Yeah. 
Turn water into blood. He turned water into blood. They did their own. Called frogs. They called frogs also. See. But they got to the point where they couldn't. The, the Egyptian magician had to confess before Pharaoh that, man, Moses' God is super. <laughs> Moses has entered another realm beyond us. Not this. God was doing all those things because of his children. Praise God. I'm going to continue from here tomorrow because our time is up. I pray the Lord. I, I need all this background so that you will understand what I'm, where I'm going to. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.